Welcome to One on One, the Daily Item's weekly digital program featuring Susquehanna Valley newsmakers interviewed by Daily Item reporters. Today's guest is Dr. Thomas Shovlin, the new superintendent at Chickalemi Area School District, interviewed by Francis Garcella. Up your new car game in March with a new Kia for just $99 a month from Sunbury Motors Kia. Lisa 2019 Kia Forte LX for just $99 a month for only 24 months. Drive away in a 2019 Kia Soul for only $149 a month. With deals like this, you'll have to hurry in to get in under the buzzers. Welcome to One on One. I'm Francis Garcella, and we're being joined today by Shiklemi Superintendent Dr. Tom Shovlin. First of all, thanks for coming out and sitting with us today. Uh, let's get right into it. Shiklemi, <laughs> Shiklemi has had a bunch of superintendents over the course of the last few years. Mm -hmm. So you get a phone call uh, about coming in, because you are you are a, you are a Sunbury native, right? Northumberland. Northumberland, right. but you graduated from Shikalemi. You're a Shikalemi right. guy. So you get a phone call. You're down in Florida at right. this time. You get a phone call to come back to Shikalemi. And I'm sure you followed Shikalemi throughout the years. Mm -hmm. What were your, what was your first thought? <laughs> why me, why now? Uh, Actually, it was a, a former student of mine who is now the executive director of the Blast IU in Williamsport. And uh, she has a cottage on the same lake where I have a cottage in the summertime. And she had asked me one time if I'd be interested in helping out with districts that are looking for a superintendent. And I said, well, the right one came along. So she informed me of the Chickalemi's need. So I called Chick and I told him, I said, if you have somebody in mind, somebody local, Fine, no problem. I said, but I'd be interested in talking with you about helping out. One thing led to another. Within a week, I was hired. <laughs> and you came back. Yeah. So, yeah. so you walk in the door, and and again, you've been following Chickalemi for a long time. You're you get hired in November. What are the positives and the negatives that you saw as soon as you get into inside the district? Well, I was amazed at the difference in the building structures. Uh, how much the high school had changed. Uh, what was at, my time there as a student was cafeteria is now a library. What was the uh, library is now uh, the offices, uh, the gymnasium switched around. So I was taken back by that, how much the high school has uh, expanded. Uh, I, I was pleased to meet people that, number one, I hadn't classed or I had coached and going to athletic events and concerts, that kind of thing, running to people that were classmates of mine, and they're now seeing their grandchildren uh, perform. Uh, some uh, a disappointment that I had was the turnover in administration, and I feel that uh, the staff had held the district together. It's, uh, with six different buildings, we were sort of floating around with six ships without a rudder because we haven't had uh, uh, a longevity of uh, leadership. And I think one thing we had to do, uh, I saw that we had to get the six people working together as a team and operate under one umbrella of a philosophy. Like I, I told the principals, I was a principal at one time. I like the job, but I don't want it anymore. Uh, you do your job. I'm here to help you, support you. And the principals, uh, to varying degrees, had different kind of experiences, uh, and I thought that my experience in the past, I was, I was 23 years as a superintendent to other school districts, and I was hoping that what was successful for me back in the 80s and 90s would also be still work today. And uh, I feel like we're heading in a good direction as far as expectations, making our expectations known to the staff and the students. and. Uh, and acknowledge that uh, kids especially make bad decisions here and there, uh, but we got to make them accountable for their decisions. And As help. do teachers and, uh, and administrators. And we learn from our mistakes and we move on and try not to repeat the same mistakes. And I think I, I, I'm tickled. I mean, I, the staff has, has welcomed me. Uh, the kids have been great. Well, you're visible. I mean, that's the one thing that we've heard is you're visible. You're at a lot of sporting events. Mm -hmm. You go... 
you go to when anybody's getting honored. You were just at the city council meeting, so you're kind of you're very visible at, at different functions. And and again, a lot of people will when we get emails and calls about it all the time is that Chickalimi gets a bad rap mm -hmm. in the valley for being you know whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you see any of that, or do you see why? Because there was something you said to me uh, the other day when you said that there's a lot of positive things that don't get recognized right. here. So, uh, so talk to us about that. What are some of the positive things that you've seen as you walked in the door? Well, just walk in any classroom. There's instruction going on. Uh, the hallways. Uh, my thing with the kids is talk to one another. Put those cell phones away. There's a lot of kids walking around the building who feel like nobody knows they're there. And I'm trying to get the the school leaders, the kids, and the faculty to acknowledge these kids. You know, just say, "Hey, how are you doing today?" And that might be the only time uh, somebody talks to those kids all day. I remember one of my first days here in the middle school. Uh, three young ladies were walking by me, and I said, "Good morning, ladies. How are you doing?" And they turned and said, "Hi." And then walked. And I heard one girl say to the other, "That's the first time I was ever called a lady." And they made an impression on that. <laughs> and I still see them in the hallways and they, they say hi. So I, I think we uh, get so tied up with our own personal problems or issues and we don't look at uh, problems, other people's problems, in a, with, from the perspective of their situation. And that's what I'm trying to get people to do, just stand back, look at the big picture, and help each other out here. Uh, They've talked about, uh, I mean, there's talk about a new whole new complex for the high school. That's uh, that's been being discussed. You are you in favor of something like that? Well, we we have uh, staff and board members looking into that possibility. Uh, I understand last year, or the year before last, there were like six options presented to the school board. Uh, and I, my immediate thought was, well, the new building is out of the picture. I think we can take the existing building, knock out the ninety-year-old portion and then build something in there. But then when we start adding on things, programs I think we ought to be doing, which we could talk about later on, mm -hmm. it got to the point where the addition is gonna cost as much if not more than a whole new building. Uh, so that is one option we're looking at. Have you been involved in new school oh, construction yeah. project? Yeah, yeah. And both the six where I was superintendent, we had construction projects. So it's, it's, it's hard today because of the state used to have a plan con process where uh, new construction, you got more reimbursement from the state than you do with renovations. But well, right now, you don't get anything from the state. So it's all in the local taxpayers. So those are certainly things you have to look at. Uh, so we're looking at a building program. Uh, we're looking at uh, can we do more with less? Uh, for example, we have four elementary buildings right now that are K through five. And uh, we're studying the possibility, feasibility of narrowing down to maybe three buildings. And instead of K through five, because we're looking at 60 years difference there, and that's a formula of years. And we're looking at the possibility and feasibility and the cost of perhaps having a K through one center at grades two and three and grades four and five. That we could focus on the needs of those kids, have transition programs, have remedial programs, and better special ed services in each building, uh, more focused for that age group. And again, we're just looking at that possibility. Well, let's get into all that because I know you have a bunch of programs that you were that you were talking about that you wanted to bring to Shiklemi, and uh, we'll be right back with Shiklemi Superintendent. Sunbury Motors Kia also has up to $10,000 off MSRP on a 2018 Kia Cadenza and a grand off a 2019 Sorento LX V6 with convenience package. Everyone's a winner with Kia because all new Kias come with a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. Up your new car game in March with Sunbury Motors Kia. Routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Leases over 24 months, 10,000 miles per year, $3,500 total due and signing or approval and trade. No security deposit required. Tax and tags extra. Discounts include all applicable rebates. Offers expire 331. Welcome back to one-on-one. -on -one. We're joined with Shiklimi Superintendent, Dr. Tom Shovlin. You were spit, you were saying that you had uh, some ideas on programs that you've, that, that you've saw throughout the years and that uh, have not been here in Shiklimi. So tell us a little bit about, about that. Well, one is the, uh, SRO program, school resource officer. In my last time I was working full time as a superintendent, I, as after the 9-11 event, and that was sort of going in the opposite direction where I was taking that district. We wanted to open up the doors, get more people in, get the senior citizens in, and so forth. 
so I sort of fought off the school resource officer business at that time. However, however today, I think we're one of the very few districts that don't have a school resource officer program. So we're not necessarily looking at all safety. We're looking at educating the kids as far as relationships with the local police and volunteerism. Uh, so we're looking real hard at that. We visit other schools to see what they have. And so I would a program bring an officer in? Yes. Or how's that? It would bring an officer in, and then they would, it would be part of a class? They would actually go to a they class? They would be in, in all the buildings, like we had the D.A.R.E. program at one time. Yeah. Uh, just develop a relationship. With one in each building or just one and then it would travel? One that would travel. One that would travel. Or, or possibly two, uh, maybe sure. two part-time. Sure. Would they whatever. be just school police or part of the Sunbury Police Department as well? Well, that, that, that we're looking at all options we're right there. Options. We're looking at the best of the best out there and try to eliminate growing pains that other districts have had and trying to mm -hmm. learn from them how to do things. Well, since you've been here, you, how many lockdowns have we had in this short <laughs> amount of time? I mean, did you two? find... Yeah, two. So, I mean... it. it well, two in that short amount of time. How many have you had in those twenty-three years? None. So that's what None. I'm saying. So you find it to be alarming? Uh, yeah. Uh, personally, I guess I shouldn't be saying this, but I think sometimes we have a knee-jerk reaction to uh, something, an event that's maybe forty, fifty miles away. Safety is the best policy, but there again, uh, you know, the way it works. Somebody calls in nine eleven. The week the phone call, we're not asked, we're told. You know, we're not told told the reason. We're just said. Lockdown, and then of course people panic, want to know what's going on, and we can't tell them anything because we don't know. Uh, so I think there has to be a meeting of the minds or how we handle these type of things. Uh, just my short time here, uh, my personality is I don't like being told to do something by somebody that I don't have any control over. Uh, <laughs> that's just my a personality flaw. Uh, that's why you don't go into politics. You said right, you 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 I'm not do a politician. You're not a politician. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but some of the other programs we're looking at, we're looking at the SR program, and we're looking at an at-risk program uh, for at-risk kids that either maturity-wise, behavioral-wise, or academically, they're at risk of not graduating. So we're designing a program that would be in a high school for those kids, for whatever reason, aren't making in a regular classroom, and design a program specifically for them uh, that may have a component if they have good behavior and have good grades, uh, then we can try to get them out in, in the community, getting some apprenticeships or internships, uh, like, for example, journalism or working out a car garage or auto body or whatever it may be, to try to get them more career-oriented and thinking about their career rather than just what's going on today. So these are things you want to do before, unfortunately, you are leaving the school district at some yes. point. Yes. Uh, well, let's talk about that. So they're in a search right now for yes. a superintendent. Yes. Yes. Uh, you have no desire to <laughs> stick around in Chickalimi and Well, the longer I'm here, it's going to be harder to turn over the range to somebody else, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I love Chickalimi. Uh, the staff is, and the kids, has just been wonderful to me, you know, open-armed. Uh, Are you in on the process for us? You, you're in on the interview process? and, and We're accepting applications, accepting applications, and I'm reaching out to, to the applica applicants and telling them that, my history that I've been a student here, I've been mm -hmm. a teacher here, I offer a unique perspective of what I feel the needs are. And I said, if you're interested in talking with me sure. over the phone or personally, and I've had a half dozen check me up on that. And so I you've had, had a lot of applications, right? Uh, right now, we have about 13 or 14. 13? Yeah, From around the state or local? Uh, around the state and uh, two other states. Right now, two other states. Wow. So, uh, any local from any other districts? I gotta try. Yeah, I yeah, gotta try. Yeah, but I'm not telling you. Who. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we've been in communication, and I, I'm I'm pleased. I'm kind of. I told the board. I said I'm uncomfortable here talking about my replacement because I'm not quite ready to give it up yet. But I have a lady who I am married to and have been married to for 46 years, living in Florida right now. Drawing up divorce papers if I stay here too long. Uh, so you so you basically have come up here part time. And you knew that going in, but but yep. let's let's be honest. Now that you got back into the flow of things, twenty three years you were a superintendent all over the place. You've mingled and mixed with. Well, I wasn't all over the place. I was at two different districts. Two okay, two right. different schools. Right. But you've mixed and mingled with kids from all over, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, just and that and that seems to be your passion as far as that, as far as bringing out new programs, as far as helping with a new complex if need be, mm -hmm. the the police officer in the school. How tough is it going to be for you to leave? Are you getting the itch again to come back and... and no. <laughs> no. 
No, <laughs> I, I'm a 69-year-old superintendent, and I don't plan on being a 70-year-old superintendent. Old superintendent. I love it, or I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. I felt good. To, I wouldn't have taken any job. This is my I have family in town. I've had my uh, nieces and nephews come through the school. Matter of fact, I still have my brother's granddaughter still in the school. Uh, she's doing a good job of hiding from me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but uh, no, I, it, I wouldn't have taken just any job. I just thought that this is my alma mater, and this is the place that got me started right, right. as far as uh, giving me a good education, getting in this the community, right, help raise me. Right. And I thought this is a good way to get back to the community. But you did say you weren't going to leave until they had somebody in place and ready to go. Right. Are you going to stay on to help? I know in certain school districts in the Valley, sometimes they have two superintendents. I don't, I mean, to, to help train people. The board asked me like if, I, if I stick around the mentor. Well, the summer is going to be much easier for me because I'm up here in the summertime anyway. And that's where I'm staying now. And I have a cottage outside Picture Rocks and I'm commuting back and forth every day. So I'll be up here this summer anyway. Uh, depending on the on the strengths of the uh, incoming superintendent, if they if the board would like me to mentor them or help them get started, uh, more than willing to do that. You'd stay on. Yep. Yeah. So basically, they want to hire it before the end of the year. You're looking at before the end of the um, school year, or you don't know. Ideally, they would like to maybe late June, July. Maybe June, July. Uh, so the start of the next school year. Yeah. Yeah. Before the yeah, next school year, the, I year. guess. Like, I'd say half the present applicants are superintendents, currently superintendents. Uh, some are assistant superintendents, some are principals who have not been a superintendent but have good experiences. So the board is going to look at the strengths of everybody and I'm trying to uh, be honest with them as far as what I feel the needs of the district are uh, and explain to them the programs I'm trying to get initiated. Now one of the concerns I have and the, the staff has and legitimately so is that okay, we're getting on board, we're investing all this time in the programs I think we ought to be looking at, and then somebody else comes in and says, okay, we're going a different right. direction. And they've had that now for over a decade. Right. And I now understand. Now you try to stop. And I, I assured the staff that I'm going to get done here what I can get done. It's not, I shouldn't say I, we, collectively. Because the brain power, when I met with my staff, the first time I, I just said, look around the room. Look at the education and the experience in this room. You tell me there's a single problem in this district has that we can't collectively solve. And it's a communication thing. It's welcoming differences of opinion. And I'm not threatened by that. I, I want other people's opinion. I want them to have input. You make them part of the uh, decision-making process. They're going to ensure things get done and get done right. Well, we appreciate you joining us, and we wish you the best of luck in whatever it is you end up doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching One on One. Be sure to tune in next week for another edition.